Okay. Okay, so for today's class, uh, I think I can start with the new chapters, matrix. So we finish all the differential equation, uh, Laplace with Laplace, right? So that will be the, uh, the differential equation part. And now we are going to have the matrix. Uh, if, you, if you have the textbook, uh, this will be the second part. So the first part is uh, the differential equation. The second part is about the factor and matrix. But I'm, I'm skipping factors because I think uh, we already have more than one for that. Uh, the uh, into the factors and applications with other forms as well. But for matrix, especially for um, the applications in in, in computation, like in a, in a linear algebra or maybe data science, uh, I need to know the, the basis. Uh, I think I can give you some basis on uh, true matrix. So within a few, uh, maybe one or two courses, like maybe this week and next week, we are going to uh, Summarize, summarize all the uh, necessary components on matrix. So we are going to start with the matrix algebra, the system of linear, linear equation or linear algebra equation, and the terminus. I think for today, uh, my goal is actually at least half of this can be reviewed. And the next week, we could start from this inverse and then finish with the eigenvalue, eigenfactor. And if we still have time, we can have another one which we call diagonalization. It's actually the same principle with the eigenvalue, eigenfactor. And what this eigenvalue means, we will get into that uh, later on. But first, we're going to describe what is matrix. Okay. So maybe if you are asked by by young younger uh, students, and they asking you, uh, what is matrix? What kind of answer you would have? <laughs> okay. Yeah, but I think the movie is kind of why the movie take the name matrix, right? You know, matrix. If you're curious on what kind of uh, meaning, literally, it's mother. Yes. It's, I think, derived from Latin. And I think it's also derived from, I think, another language as well. But it's, 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 it's meaning, it's mother. To be precise, it's womb. So matrix is like an environment where life is birthed. So when you take matrix, you can think like you have a bracket, right? And you have like a bunch of numbers, which means that we are creating an environment that is going to be defined by those numbers. And then we define the numbers in a setting that has a columns and rows. We call like some rows and some columns, and we define that, okay, this is a matrix. So we have some kind of arrangement that has set up red, uh, uh, columns and rows. Okay. okay. So uh, if you would like to like to know why it's called like womb or taken from what kind of language, you could take observation on that because that's just interesting. Why people take okay, we call this matrix. Okay. Like they made some. A new world, which is we are setting our uh, uh, our environment by numbers, and that's why the, the films taken the name Matrix because they are transform the world into another world, right? Okay, uh, that's yeah. Transformation is also part of the Matrix, okay? but we'll let, let you uh, know later. Okay. So Matrix, 
Ah, oh, I haven't charged my Apple Pencil, so let me just wait for a few moments. Okay, maybe just a reminder. Thursday quiz. Uh, I think I have already have to decide my question. So just three questions. The first question is, is normal transformation. The plus and the inverse. The second one is more logical statement kind of thing. And third one is solving the differential equations through the top one. So just three questions. So I hope you can prepare your notes in an A4, both sides, you can use paper, a one paper, both sides. Prepare it well, and hopefully when you write your notes, you also learn, okay? Because sometimes when you write, you need to read out or maybe read in your mind, and when you read in your mind and you write something, you are learning something, right? So I hope when you take a note, you also learn something. Okay? You're, you're just, it's not the same as copy paste something in your, like maybe uh, working on your homework, like copy paste, it's different. Okay? But when you take a note, you need to take some essentials to be taken out and then to be expected, okay, maybe this question needs to have uh, this principle, oh, I need to take this as a note and then I need to understand this and blah blah blah. And that's the process of learning. So uh, uh, my course in this engineering of math uh, is compared with if you take in my previous course like in calculus or basic math, uh, those courses is more fundamental that needed the logical sense in your um, uh, requirements for other courses as well. But for this engineering of math, since this has some branches in other course as well, so it might be not only your your logic, but also how to solve the problem. And I think the problem with that, you need to have, like in your computer, uh, you can have large random access memory, but your storage is kind of still low, still has problem. The storage is too low. So your the problem is like you're working really fast in your app, uh, in your RAM, but your memory is too low. So you need to also increase it. So that's why I'm giving you A4. So it's like your external storage. <laughs> okay. So let me start with the matrix. So matrix, we can arrange matrix as. So we have arrangement of matrix, row and column, okay? And we can set this M, let me, let me write uh, M rows, okay? And N columns. So we say this M and N is the size, okay? Size M, N. Or maybe M multiplied by N. So if I say uh, two by three matrix, so it has two rows and three columns. For example, let's say we have a matrix A. So two rows, right, two rows, Three column. Maybe write this is three columns. This is two rows. And then we can also describe the matrix as a column and row vectors. If you remember vectors, we could also describe that in the matrix. 
and we could take the column and row as its fac own vectors. For example, this column, you can call this a column vector. And this uh, row, this is row vector. And then let uh, let A and B are the same the same size same size matrices. Then we could plus or subtract these two matrices. Okay. which means that we are going to subtract or add all the same vector uh, or matrix uh, in each positions for each own uh, row and column. Okay. So this means that in every row and column, like one one is on the left, top left, one two, uh, two one two two, or, and everything that in matrix, you get plus or minus with the same exact position. And we could also so if k is a scalar, then we could also multiply k with a matrix, okay, which means that we are going to multiply all k with all the points inside the matrix. And the property, I think it's easy. Uh, it's the same as we what we have in the in the or, uh, regular uh, addition and subtraction, or the matrix. Uh, they are same as uh, regular in regular calculation. The quite difference is going to be the multiplication, the product. Let me go through the new page. This is just a introduction. Well, if you know how already, I don't think you need to, to take notes for all the things. Maybe just take some important things. Okay. So for matrix multiplication. The definitions okay, for this multiplications let me write a b as in uh maybe let's say a a is a one one a one two let's say it has until uh p column and m rows for a and B also similar but different in terms of the column so A is uh, 
m rows and p columns okay and b is p rows and n columns okay. so the size this is rows columns rows columns okay so in multiplications for matrix the size on the column for a this column here it needs to be the same size as the row for b, b. so b, b so when we take the multiplications a b is equal with m n okay the size And why why this happened? Because in this product, when we are going to let me get you to this. Let me copy one by one here. Now multiplications will start with the rows, okay, and then continue with this column. So which means it's A11 multiplied with B11 and then plus. A12 and then maybe this part here, B, uh, B21, and then another uh, point here, and then point here, and then plus, 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 that will be on the top left of the new uh, product. Okay? And then you can do the same thing with the, with the second row as well. And you can write this with maybe if you would like to write with 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 the sigma notations if you would like. Okay. Which means that this will be going to, to to add all the multiplication of A and B and each exact row and column row and column row. I think if this is what, uh, still abstract, maybe we could take, take some example just to review how we did the multiplications. Okay, let's say we have uh, matrix A. And matrix B. And if we multiply a b like that it's the same size and of course they both the same row and column so the result should be also two by two matrix right so we could start from this two let me just write all a and b side by side okay. so we could start from the first row here and the first column so four by uh, four multiplied with nine is thirty six plus forty two, so it's seventy eight. So we write seventy eight over here, right? And then maybe second row, and then uh, first column. So second row, first column, this one. 
So 3, 9 is 27, and plus 30 is 57, that part. Yeah. And then first row, second column. So let me write with uh, green. This and this. Okay. So this will be uh, 4 by negative 2 is negative 8 plus 56. 56 minus 8 is 48. Okay. And then uh, the second row and second column. So 3 with negative 2 is negative 6. So 40 minus 6 is 34. So we have this uh, final result of our multiplication. Okay, now if we take BA, okay, not AB, so we take B first. And then we start multiplying this B with A. So we are going to see that this is going to be, the first calculation seems different from the first result, right? So if you take all the uh, necessary calculations, it's going to be 48 here, and 50, uh, 63 minus 10 is 53. Uh, 42 with 40 is 82. So it's just a, a, a quick observation that matrix AB is not equal with matrix BA. Although they have the same size, but if we switch over the positions, then the result is not equal. Okay, this is the uh, one property for matrix. Okay. And then if you have, uh, let's say, let me, let me write here. It's a small example. Let's say A is 5,1,2,8,0,7. And B is negative 4, 2, negative 3, 0. So if you multiply A, B, I think we could do that. This will be negative 4. This is negative 4. This is 6. This is negative 15. 3, uh... Oh, negative three, sorry. Negative six. Okay. And if we would like to multiply B, A, if we switch over B and A, if this happened to, to this example here, it has, this is two by two, and we 
we write? This is two by two. This is uh, three by two. So the column here, two columns, three rows. It's not right. So this B A is not two by. So you need to make sure the size for columns and rows, okay? For A, B, you have the same column two here and row two. Okay, another uh, necessary terms aside the uh, the multiplication is the transpose of matrix so transpose so let matrix A it's A11, A12, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's A is that matrix. A, the transpose, or maybe write uh, transpose of matrix A or maybe let let the here. so let A with a T symbol here is equal to transpose of A so A transpose is A11 A21 this is A uh, a12, A22, A1n. This is A, M, N. So the transpose is, we are going to change every row into columns. So if A is 9, 0, 4, 3, 7, 5, then, so if, so example. So then A transpose is 9, 0, 4, 3, 7, 5. If you have three by three, let's say we have a three by three matrix. Then B transpose is three, six, one, two, five, negative two, negative one, eight, four, okay? So if we transpose back to uh, if we transpose this transpose B then we are going to back to the original B or we, if we transpose this transpose A so see the row becomes column row becomes column it's going to be the original one so if we have uh, A transpose and we are going to transpose again this is going to be back to the original matrix. And we could also take the uh, addition of subtractions and transpose. Okay. And we could take this, each of the matrix transposes. If we take the multiplications and then transpose, we can 
rewrite as B transpose, A transpose. Okay. If we multiply with the scalar K, this is what the final final product. And then regarding the transpose, uh, an n by n matrix is we call um, symmetric if the A transpose is equal to the original A. For example, okay, this, this example here, this matrix. Except this two, look at this two, at the center, we imagine this to be a column and then all the rows change to be column. They are going to be the same exact this matrix and they are going to be the original A. So the A transpose is the same as its original equation or the original matrix. And we call that as a symmetric. And then there are some we call special matrices. That perhaps in the future you will you will maybe heard about that or probably uh, take some first hand experience. So let me write the special matrices. The first the first part of this is we call the matrix zero or zero matrix. Just a normal zero. So it can be uh, zero is like only half one column like this, or it has two by two or any, any size. So, so zero is uh, M by N matrix. So what does it mean is if we take A plus the, the matrix zero, it doesn't change the matrix A. Okay. So zero can be with any, any dimensions, any size. So we could also uh, take this like that. Okay. So the second part is what we call as triangular matrix. So what is triangular matrix? So if we have um, that's a four, two, one. Okay, and then the rest part here is zero. 
So this is what we call the triangular matrix. So the matrix A will be triangular matrix if all the entries, all the entries above this diagonal here is zero. This is we call triangular matrix. This is the upper triangular, okay, the upper triangular. So upper triangular. Or maybe below the diagonal zero. That will be the lower triangular. This is what we call lower triangular. But generally, we could just call this triangular matrix. Okay. Okay, so triangular, upper, lower. The next is we call diagonal matrix. Okay. So only the diagonal that has a number, the other parts will be zero. So we call that diagonal matrix. Say we have um, three, negative one, five, and the other part is zero. And then, if the diagonal matrix, if the, the diagonal entry all equal, we call as scalar matrix. For example, we have, let's say, 5, 5, and then 0, 0. Why we call this a scalar matrix? Because this is, we could take 5 out and if they say this is 1, 1, 0, 0. So this is, we call the the one one here uh, we call this is an identity matrix and another part of our special matrix the identity matrix so in general when we have one one and then uh, I'm not sure how many zero here, but this is all one, one, one. And whenever we multiply the matrix with identity, the result is the same as the matrix itself. So let's say we have I M equal uh, multiplied with A. This will be equal to A multiplied with the identity N. Okay. This is the same as the A. 
the next part is the symmetric one that I've been uh, told you previously. Okay, that's it for the introduction of the matrix algebra. The next section is the system of linear algebraic equations. So in linear equations, in linear equations, we could write the form. Let, let me write the, the form, a general form. Okay, so we call this it, it, as a general form in system of uh, linear algebraic equations, and you will see that the, the terms for each coefficient for, let's say this x is our variable, so x1, x2, and we can add more and more variables, and we have now a11, a12, and then all the terms here is very similar to what we have in the matrix, so uh, this means that at the end of the this is it, 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 this uh, explanation. We are going to see how this correlates with our uh, matrix system. Okay. And if you remember what we did in the, in the differential equation, we are familiar with the homogeneous, non homogeneous, that is when we have this constant uh, zero, we call this homogeneous, and then we have a constant and it's non homogeneous. So if constant is zero, this will be a homogeneous. Otherwise, system is non-homogeneous.
And if we have a system, let's say three, uh, three x one plus six x two. We could solve these equations and try to find the solutions. That means we are going to find the intersection of these two lines. Okay. That's how we interpret uh, geometrically. The methods, I believe you're already familiar with, with how to solve this. And I think it's quite easy. Right? We, can, we can substitute. We can substitute, for example, x1 here. We take the form of x2 goes here. And 7 plus 4x2 can be substituted to here. And we get all x2. And then we get x2. We can also get x1. And that's the solution. Or we could eliminate. We multiply with 3. And eliminate, subtract this 1 and 2. Right? Subtract and we get the solution. But if I want to, uh, to take uh, on the, uh, these two lines, is the solution is actually the intersections, right? the intersections. So now, every time we have a system of linear equations, because we can easily interpret as in the, uh, the two-dimension or three-dimension system, we now need to take that visuals as our uh, reference, okay? as our reference, because this will be related to transformation, linear transformations, okay? and that is the principle in, I think, mostly in in comp computations. Okay? You are going to transform something into another thing. Okay? okay, we'll have a break. Okay, now if we try to uh, to solve this. We can solve by substitutions. Let's say substituting this 7 minus 4x2 to 3. It's 21. Uh, 12 plus 6, or this is maybe I will write. 12, uh, negative 12 plus 6 is negative 6. So we know that this will equal a 6x2. So x2 will be 3. Uh, okay, and x1 is Oh, wait, 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 I think this should be wait, wait, wait. Should be plus, sorry, sorry so 3, 7 plus, so 21 plus 18, that's 3, so 8 and x2, is negative 18, so x2 is negative 1, so x1 is 7 minus 4, or Three. Okay, we call this substitution method. The other way we could take is let me copy this. I think we can multiply with three. So this will be twelve. This will be twenty one. And then subtract. This will be 18x2 and negative 18. So x2 is negative 1. And 
we can get the rest by substituting back again and we get also the same x1 is 3 okay so at least two methods uh, substitution and eliminations you could write and solve immediately okay. but what I want to make sure is that uh, is that if we have line equations especially the two dimension two dimension linear equations we could interpret with this three picture okay. the first picture is our solution that is the intersection of two lines okay. this is precisely what we did when we find with substitution elimination we are going to find the point here okay so let's say x this x is x1 and this y is x2 okay so to help you to, to get this line so the solutions of the system is this coordinate okay. and we say that is according to our term this is going to be a consistent okay, consistent system and then another interpretation if the line okay, maybe the line line 1 and line 2 is the same thing they are the same line okay. it has the same gradient the same uh, line equations actually so what's the solution the solutions can be in this many points along the this line okay so if also we call this a consistent okay because we can find the solutions although the solution will have like many many solutions okay. and the third one is the line is parallel okay it's parallel so this red line and blue line will never never have any intersections okay that's why this is we call the inconsistent so no solution okay if we maybe turn around a little bit at some point it will cross right but if it is really parallel we will never have any intersection okay okay this is for line okay for two dimensions what if if we have three variables we will have a plane okay. we will have plane so we can have six possible uh criteria so this is the plane so it's the first plane, the second plane, the third plane. All the, the three uh, the plane intersections will be this red color here, the red dots. It's clearly the intersection of the, all the planes. Okay. But we could also have possibility for this two two uh to condition okay so the intersections will be this whole line so we can have many many solutions okay as we see from the two dimensions we could also have this many many solutions so all the three planes is going to have uh, the result of the intersection is the line okay. so along the line that will be the solution and it can be many many solutions and of course we could have this they are not in the same plane and then they are uh, relatively parallel and we can say that this is having no points in common and then there are other possible answer for this that probably we'll have a line equations for each part here in which we say it's inconsistent because we are not sure if whether it's this solution, this solution, or this solution, and we say it's inconsistent. Okay. This part here, the consistent one, they are precisely in the same line. Okay. But this one here is having different line. Okay. As we as we can see also here is different line. Okay. So we say the system is inconsistent. All these three is inconsistent.
So this is, let me write again. This is, we call unique solution. This is having many solutions or infinitely many solutions. And this is, yeah, we can directly say it's inconsistent or no solutions. Okay, for the three variables, as we see within this picture, to solve the three variables, I believe you may be familiar with some methods. The same methods we did in two dimensions like elimination, substitutions, they are all can be used as, as, um, as your method. But what I want to emphasize within this lecture is what we call the augmented matrix. So all the method that is, I think, very basic, I'm, I'm skipping that. So I will go directly to the augmented matrix. Let me copy the, uh, the form in the uh, first page uh, with this. All here. Let me copy this. Okay. Now to, to write the augmented matrix, to write augmented matrix, we are going to write, as usual, take the brackets of the matrix, okay, and then write the coefficient. All coefficient and write all until n columns and m rows. So you have m rows and n columns. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's not yet close and then we wrote also the the constant b1 b2 up until bm okay this is what we call the augmented matrix okay. so augmented matrix of our system of linear equation is this okay. so we could write all the coefficients according to the this coefficient here all of this and then we separate with just straight line and then write the constant okay, of the system. And then to solve 
to solve the system to find the solutions and then maybe to determine whether it has unique solutions or maybe it is inconsistent uh, because we have uh, if it is consistent it can be it can be many solutions or it has a unique solution or it is an inconsistent like it doesn't have any solution and we are going to check that uh, solutions by uh, by the method of we call the elementary row operations So in elementary row opera operations, we are going to operate this system here, this augmented matrix. Okay. So first, we can change rows. So when we change rows, this A and B will be included as one row. Okay. So we can change from row 1 to row 2 or row 2 to row 3. Um, it could be any, any row. So we can... We can interchange any rows and then we can multiply with non-zero constant. Uh, multiply row, sorry, I haven't completed this yet. This is multiply row. So for example, row 1 multiply with 2 row 2 multiplied with 3 and so on and so forth. We can multiply with any any constant, non-zero constant. And then add add non-zero multiple of one row to other row. So maybe row 1 will be multiplied by 2 and then minus the row 3 or add with row 4 or any any row okay so you can do with with all these three three operations okay and you can you can multiply first and then subtract or you can interchange rows first and then subtract it can be any of the uh, of this this three so it, it it's up to you up to you The goal is to find a solution. Okay. So you could have, uh, you could create several paths, and then the way you are maybe thinking how the machine works is they are going to take the shortest path to get this solution, because this can be have like it can have like you can like circling around and then, okay we find a solution or maybe you could just straightforward and then find is the short shortest path okay. it, it could be so maybe let me just show you how to, to, to do that so our goal okay, is we call the method is we call the elimination method or to be precise the Gauss elimination method this method the first idea is to take this diagonal make make the diagonal diagonal value equal to 1 so 1 1 1 1 okay. and the triangular matrix this part here at least this part the, the lower one triangular matrix 
it means that the, the lower part is zero. Okay, I hope this can be uh, understood. So what what is our goal? We take the diagonal, let it one 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 one, and then this part here, the lower one is zero. So that's our goal. So we can do anything on this three operations. We can interchange the rows. We can multiply with scalars. We can subtract, add, and we can do all this three. Okay, we can do all this three to make. The diagonal one 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 one, and this lower part is zero. You could also add the upper part zero. It's also okay, but I think just to make this lower part zero, we could easily find a solution. Okay. Let me show you. Let me show you how by giving a um, an example. I think this demonstration should give you some insight on how like I said how the algorithms works at least for solving the linear system okay so first is let me take one page so suppose we have a system Well, sometimes in other textbook they are using X, Y, Z, but in our in our in my textbook here they are using the X one, X two, X three, the same thing, okay, the same thing, just the different variables. Okay, the first thing, if we need to solve this, then if you want to make the uh, the using the the elementary operations like before. Then we are going to take into augmented matrix. So let me write with dark blue. So augmented matrix. Would be two, six, one, seven, one, two, negative one, negative one, uh, five, seven, negative four, nine. Okay. Now you can imagine. If we increase the, the number of the variables, I think the basic one, like using substitutions or eliminations like we did in the previous page, that is pretty simple, right? But if we add more and more variables, we are going to be, to be confused on the numbers, right? Because there are so many variables and we are going to substitute elimination. And why not doing all of them simultaneously? That is what this row of row uh, elementary operations means the the operations will combine all the substitutions all the eliminations simultaneously at the same time okay so take this augmented matrix okay and then our goal is to make one 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 right I think we could take that at, as the first step and then make it maybe this zero, zero, zero. Okay. Well, we could take uh, zero, zero, zero or one, one, one first. But if we take, if we see from our uh, matrix here, this one, I think we can move this row into the first row. So let's maybe doing that first. Okay. So let's say row one is exchanged to row two. So one, two, negative one, negative one, and two, six, one, seven. Okay. So I will give you step by step. But in the process, like when you did the calculation. You could combine some steps into one to make your steps maybe shorter. 
but if you are maybe need to be careful on that, maybe you could just take one by one. But you need to write a lot of <laughs> calculation. Okay. So, okay, the next thing, perhaps we want to make this zero. Okay. And because we have one here, so we could take this one as our subject of subtraction. So we could take this two, and if this is multiplied by two, we could we could subtract this two with this or this with this the same. You could do both things and the result will be the same. I mean the final result. Okay? Although the calculation may look different in the process, the final result will be the same. Okay? You can try by yourself at home, okay? And, and I believe you need to try that, okay? Because this is actually interesting. Okay, and then let's say we are going to to take the R2, let's say R2 minus 2R1. So the first row is just as it is, no change. The second row, I will use this R2 minus 2R1. Or maybe if we, uh, to make it more clear, let me write this R2 on the row 2 here. So this means that the row 2 has changed within these calculations, okay? So let's minus this, okay? So 2 minus 2 is 0. 6 minus 4 is 2. And 1 minus minus 2, so 1 plus 2 is 3. And then 7 minus minus 1 or oh, minus 2 sorry so plus 2 so 7 plus 2 is 9 okay and then do the same thing with the this the third row so the third row we can write r3 minus 3 r1 so that is to make this 5 is 0 okay this is my suggested path you could try the other path. Okay? You could try the other path, and I believe if it is, uh, you are doing it uh, with a consistent calculations, no no mistake in the process, you will find the same results. Okay, so we are going to to minus this row three with three r one. So five minus five, seven minus six, like that. Okay, so. So this 5 is uh, 0, right? And, oh, 5 is 10. Oh, 7 minus 10, sorry, sorry. It's a negative 3. And negative 4 plus 5 is 1, right? And then 9 minus minus 3, or... Uh, why is three? It's five. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Why is confusing here? Okay. So nine minus minus five is fourteen. Okay, now it's correct. Now, if you look this. Two rows here, row two and row three. I want to change this row three so that this negative three can be zero. So we can multiply by two and multiply this by three and then plus. So negative six plus six is zero, right? So let's do that. So let me write in this part here. So the same thing here, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 2, 3, 9, okay. And then the last part here, the last row will be um, 3R2 plus 2R3. So 
So 3 by 2 is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. Okay. So this is 0. This is 0. And then 3 by 3 is 9. 9 plus 2 is 11. And then 27 plus 27 plus 28, 55. Okay, now the next thing here, I want to make the diagonal 111. One, one. So let's just divide with the constant. So 1, 2, negative 1, and then 0, let me divide by 2, so 1, or maybe let me write here, so this is half of R2. And then this will be divided by 11 for the, the third row. So this will be 0, 0, um, 1, and then 5. So for this result here, the x3 is 5. Okay. And then the second row, it's conclude that x2 plus 3 over 2 x3 is equal 9 over 2. So x2 is 9 over 2 minus 3 over 2 multiplied by 5 is 15 over 2. So this will be um, 6 over 2 or negative 3. And then the first row is x1 plus 2 x2 minus x3 is equal negative 1. So exchange all the variables. So x1 is negative 11 uh, plus, so 10 minus 1 is 9, right? Okay, wait, wait, wait. It's 11 minus 1, so 10. So we get x3 is 5, x2 is negative 3, and x1 is 10. Okay, so we could just end up until this part and then substitute back, okay? Or, we could still compute this and make this upper triangle zero. So we could take each variable directly, okay? Th that's up to you. If you still think this is a thing, you stop here and then we can just calculate up like just usual substitution, that's okay. Or if you want to make the, the upper triangle zero, we could do that as well. If you want to make that zero, let me just copy and show you. So we can start by Taking the the first one, the two and negative one becomes zero. So let me write R one minus two R two. So one still one. One minus zero is one. Two minus two is zero. Minus one minus three over two by two is going to be minus one minus three is minus four. And then minus 1, minus 2, 
multiply with 9 over 2 is minus 9, so minus 10. And this is the same. And the same here. Okay. And then one more time. I think I need to go a little bit left here. And then we could take this R1 minus 4R3. So 1 is still 1, 0. Negative 4, negative 4. So it should be um, minus 4, uh, minus 4. It's zero, right? And then negative 10, negative negative 20 is 10. And then the second row here, it's going to be uh, negative 3 over 2 R3, or R2 minus 3 over 2 R3. So zero. 1, 3 over 2 minus 3 over 2 is 0, and 9 over 2 minus five, uh, 15 over 2 is going to be um, negative 6 over 2 is negative 3, so 0, 0, 1, 5. So you, you get directly for x3, x2, and x1. The last form, when we did this elimination method, the last form is we call the row echelon form. Okay. This form is we call here, this form is row echelon form. And this is the reduced echelon form. So when you have one 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 in diagonal, it we call we call it excellent form. Just the name, okay, the terms. Okay, I think I will just stop here and I prepare some feedbacks, but it's about the matrix. Just a simple, uh, simple linear system, and asking about determinants just to sh to make sure that we are going to have that in the next week. Okay. Uh, before we end. Is there, is there any question on matrix? Okay. So let me remind, this Thursday, we will have a quiz. Don't forget to bring your calculator. Prepare your A, A4 notes carefully. Okay. Because I think last time we have the quiz and midterm. I think a few students still, they don't prepare the A4 notes very well. So they don't even can can write, uh, can read the, their own notes. <laughs> so prepare very well. Okay? You have a few days to, to prepare. Okay. So let me go through the feedback. Only two questions. The linear system and determinants. Determinants, you can try if you remember. If not, then we are we are going to uh, to give you explanation on next week. Okay.
Okay. okay. So actually in the textbook, the matrix part is actually quite huge. So I'm just maybe taking only half of that until the uh, eigenvalue, perhaps until the diagonalization, just that part. The, the rest is actually, it's more like a short applications, like like in the cryptography, like in security, okay? because metric is, is easily to be applied in most cases because it's just using the linear transformation. So you can apply it in more, in more application. And I think in now, in the today's technology, because we are mostly re relating all with digital assets and all still using the metrics. So, so inside the deck, the, the, if you took some course related to data science, well, the, the core is still using the metrics to transform. Okay. okay, let's start now. Okay. okay, let's start, three, two, one. Okay, it's very small in, this, in, the, in the board, but I think you can see clearly on your screen. So you have three linear equations. I'm giving you three minutes to solve. I think you can use any methods. You could use any methods to solve. If you notice very well, you will see there is some coefficient that can be easily compute. Oh, why is going back? I think the internet is refreshed, so you have another time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, someone already got the answer? So you need to add all the solutions. Okay. Add all the solutions. Yeah, if this is happening. Something happened to the connections. I also don't know what what I'm going to do.
Okay. Okay, good. Okay, why the answer? Interesting answer. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. Very good. Okay, question two. This is asking about determinants, although we haven't yet learned that in our course. But this little two, I want to know, like, do you still remember the determinants? Three by three matrix. We are going to to learn the determinants next week. Okay. 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 Very good. Okay. So lastly the student idea and if you have any feedback. Okay, and that's it for today. If you finished.